Quick disclaimer, this video will be full of spoilers, but in my humble opinion, Lucius is still a great game to be experienced by a simple recap or by watching a full walkthrough. Some stuff will be left out though, so there's still a good reason for you guys to experience your own playthrough. Also, this may be obvious, but I'm not here to talk about religion, I'm just here to talk about a video game. Please keep that in mind when leaving a comment. There's also a very high likelihood this video gets demonetized from all of the talks of brutal unalivings. Uh, consider this a gore warning for 2012 Game and Graphics. And then one last quick note that video essays like this take a very long time to make, usually a minimum of around 50 hours just to play the game, write the script, record the voiceover, add the clips, and gameplay footage with editing magic. And with that in mind, a like and a subscribe goes a long way to let me know when people actually like this kind of content and whether I should invest the amount of time into making more of it. Or don't, and I'll probably make more of it anyway because I enjoy it. Thanks for watching. A game where you play as the spawn of Satan certainly grabbed a lot of attention when Lucius released back in 2012. PewDiePie did a let's play of the game back around its release, garnering it even more attention. But with so much spotlight shined onto a game developed by a small Finnish studio, Shiver Games, could it really hold up? Review sites say no, but players said yes. How can a game be so divisive across the board? Lucius averaged around a 6 out of 10 from the major review sites like IGN, PC Gamer, and GameSpot. I couldn't even find a Metacritic review for the game at first on their official website, but thankfully the Steam page still shows it, and they stored it at a 59 out of 100. Yet, the audience rating is at a 92% liked rating on Google by the players and boasts very positive reviews on Steam, with almost 7,000 reviews made. So which is it? Is Lucius a good game or not? Let's find out. The thing I immediately notice is the superbly slow pacing of Lucius. It's going to be a pretty hard adjustment based on today's game pacing standards. Or maybe once I get more into it, it'll be welcomed and refreshing. It's always kind of up in the air with pacings like this. What's certain at this point is that this game is not meant to be played after coming off of a 12 hour work shift just to turn off your brain and shoot people. It's meant to be a well paced experience and story. Some of the main negative reviews of this game say that its biggest downside is that it's basically just a point and click adventure game. But is that truly something bad about the game or just something to be aware of before buying? I'd personally argue the latter. The next thing I notice is how interactable the world is. Your first victim is to kill Mary, a housemaid for your family. The game very simply teaches me how to lock her in the freezer and I do as it says, but then it claims the freezer isn't cold enough to kill her. So I try to find the thermostat and for a brief moment, misclick the light switch, which does actually turn off the lights and back on if you click it again. Very simple, but allows for immersion and just enjoyment of the world you're in. You feel like you have power over the world itself and over your decisions. If you want to go pick up a wine bottle and drop it and break it, you can do so. If you want to open and scavenge through every little cabinet and drawer in the house, you can do so. This game is really good at giving you that feeling and almost illusion of freedom and within a real virtual world. And being able to feel powerful within a world is really good when you're supposed to be roleplaying a devil child. Now, after killing our first victim, Mary, we see our father, Satan, join us in the room the next morning, teach us about some basics of inventory management and combining items like the batteries with our flashlight. And after doing so with our flashlight working, we can actually see his devilish horns on the wall only in the shadow. They added a little detail to reward you for getting the flashlight working, managed to make you feel special for noticing it, but also made it impossible for anyone above the IQ of 40 to miss out on that reward. Lucius isn't anything crazy, but it's had a pretty flawless tutorial so far, and I'm having a blast. While Satan is telling me my purpose in life, I run over to the closet and play with the beach ball inside. After ignoring his lecture, I head downstairs and I open up every door I can find to make sure I don't miss anything. Eventually, I find some more items like a screwdriver and I head downstairs. Now on the way downstairs, my power bar starts to deplete. And I don't really know why I need power yet, but it's there and it's going down and that's scary. 
The game tells me in the bottom left corner of the stream that crosses lower your power, a locational weakness to be aware of. So positioning will matter when going for sneaky kills in the future is what this is telling me. The game is suavely helping me prepare for mechanics down the road, a great little trick to pick up on just by walking down some stairs. The morning after the murder, I have to go grab the lock off the freezer so nobody should suspect me, and I get away with a clean murder. I unlock telekinesis as a power for completing the first mission. The cops show up the next day when a stream is heard finding the body, and they assume she passed out from cardiac arrest since she was in her 50s and then sadly froze to death from there. A detective type fellow by the name of McGuffin shows up, and with a name like that, there's no way this guy is going to be able to put the pieces together and solve this mystery. They would have had a better chance hiring Shaggy and Scooby at that point, but with that kill over with, we transition into the next level, Smoking Kills. A dialogue begins between our human father and some drunken businessman type. The, the dad talks about how this murder could affect his upcoming election cycle. And that would be terrible. Imagine losing a nanny and dropping two points in the polls. Talk about a rough week. This is the moment where I really start to appreciate the soundtrack of Lucius. I'm surprised it took me this long as it's just perfect. Maybe that's why I didn't notice because it fits in so well, I just didn't even think about it. I don't think you could put in a single other song that could exist in its place and just work that well. It's the perfect instrumental backdrop for devilish mischief and unease. Lucius is presenting a serious tone and story, but it plays in a fun way and the soundtrack reflects that. Spawning in our bedroom again to start level 2, we can open up our diary to get a tip that our human father hates when Gene, the businessman type, fella smokes in the living room. I walk across the hallway, turn on the TV, only to hear them talk about the weather on the news. I was really hoping for something else here, maybe a relay of the murder that just happened last night within my own home. But keep in mind, that murder is meant to be covered up by the smoking business guy for now from the press, so maybe the TV will start to participate in sharing our evil deeds next kill. Then I run into my human mother, who tries to explain that Mary is in a better place now, along with her husband. Giving us a little bit of lore for the dead maid and shows that our mother is trying to care for us by guiding a young one when coping with death. Pretty above and beyond flavor and added dialogue if you ask me. But then next she nags about our dirty room and gives us a chore to clean it. So we actually hate her. A fucking chore. I'm the devil's son and I have to go pick up my Legos. Part of me feels like this part of the game is so ironic, it's a tad bit funny, but I'm also actually so annoyed that I have to go clean my room in this game, but whatever, let's get it done. I was really hoping to come back to this script and tell you guys, oh, holy shit, guys, they actually made chores really fun. You gotta use your kinesis powers, and no, you literally just fucking pick up wooden cars, throw them in your tour box like a drooling toddler. This was absolutely just a time pad. But my behavior score did get up to 50%. Maybe this is some ingenious mechanic that just hasn't seen the light of day yet. So let's continue. I grab a whiskey bottle I found in a closet, head downstairs, and get so mad I just see red when I see the businessman downstairs. I pick up a wine bottle and drop it, for only for him to comment on the fact that accidents do happen, I suppose. I'm sure it's fine. So much interactivity within the world, the AI and NPCs actually noticing me picking up and dropping and breaking items. The developers in the world of Lucius does a very good job of respecting the player's actions, no matter how big or small. I hide directly behind him in his chair so he can't see me, very sneakily steal his matches, and then immediately he says, Hey, have you seen my matches? And gets up. Kind of comically stupid, but I'm game. Opening the diary from this point lets me know that the only way he's going to be able to light his cigarettes without his matches is going to be with the gas stove burners. The diary even prompts me that the stove can be leaky and I just need a tool to loosen it. I get what people say when they say it could just be a point and click adventure. You could play this game while absolutely plastered as long as you can still read. This is beyond hand holding. It's guide rails which the player seemingly can't part from, at least at this point in the game so far. And I think a lot of people may have just been expecting more of an open world creative sandbox game for you to murder people with with your devilish powers in whatever way you choose, Burger King style back then, having it your way. That was just the era back then, with things like Skyrim and Minecraft pretty freshly released and taking the world by storm, every other game was expected to be totally free and choice based. Linear storyline games, especially this linear, were kind of seen as a thing of the past and on their way out. 
Now, playing this a decade or so later, this is exactly what I find myself needing at the current time to enjoy a refreshing and fun narrative. All right, continuing the game itself, the businessman goes and lights his cigarette when walking away to get more booze and says, ah, man, the gas is getting a little loose. If only I had a screwdriver to tighten it up. You know, like the screwdriver we just picked up earlier. This is the furthest thing from an aha moment possible with all the on-rails guidance so far. But I tinker with the stove happily anyway. With the stove nice and leaky, next time Gene the Businessman comes back for a light, the poor guy will get toasted. In the following cutscene, the detective is clearly starting to get suspicious, but not of any particular person yet. And then transitioning to the next level, we get a voiceover from the perspective of the detective himself, letting us know the narrative is largely from his perspective while we play through the boy's perspective at the same time. Next, we get a little tutorial from Satan about our telekinesis powers before heading into the next mission. They control kind of walkily, but allow us to move items with our mind, and in my opinion, the cooler part of the ability is to be able to turn on and off electric devices from a distance like a radio. But we finish up and we have some more souls to collect for our devilish dad. Drink for every time I say devilish. It's a great word. Level 3 is titled Tone Death. Spawning from our bedroom, once again, I run across to the bathroom and see a hairdryer next to so much water in the bathroom, and I assume I'll be using that for either this kill or at least a kill at some point, but not yet. I do, however, notice my power is being drained, so there must be a cross nearby. And this is when I see that you can actually interact with the cross, flipping it upside down to prevent the power drain. This allows you to set up kills in potential future areas, rewarding patienced planning alongside it being a really cute little lore touch. Genuinely genius. There's so many great parts of design in Lucia's, all stuffed into a very linear package that holds your hand while you're also in a booster seat. And the question becomes, does it distract from the game too much or does it still work? I've got to play onward to reach my verdict. I sprint to the downstairs bathroom because it's where the map told me to go and I see my potential victim, the grumbling handyman around the house. Said handyman is so drunk on the job that he decides to lay down on the bathroom floor while a satanic six-year-old changes his to-do list with the pencil next to him. I picked up his stray wrench and when I changed the to-do list, I noticed that I made him want to fix the piano for whatever reason, so I assume I have to go mess with the piano with my newfound wrench powers. And for one of the first times in the game, they don't tell you 100% exactly where to go to find the piano at least, but it's a cliche rich person's home from the 70s, so I bet it's in the living room so they can play it for their guests. Yup, exactly. Then wait a couple minutes and he comes over to fix the piano and the game tells you to use your new kinesis powers to help on this one and holy shit, the death scene here was way more brutal than I expected. I don't think I can even show this on YouTube. Go play the game and check that one out for yourself. That level ends with a cutscene of the detective just still absolutely clueless and mostly reasoning the deaths to just be a run of bad luck. I would guess putting this story in his narrative is a way for him to reflect on his mistakes of not catching the evil deeds sooner. I will say I think this is the time where we see the extent of the gameplay loop that Lucius has to offer. I'm going to stop meticulously scripting and writing down every detail from each mission, at least for now, and just play the game and enjoy it the way it was meant to be played. I'll either come back to the end of the game and give you guys my thoughts, or maybe I'll see you guys even sooner if something really juicy happens. All right, I'm back after completing two more levels and there's too much juice not to talk about. The Agnes level taught me a lot, who's just the name of the person we kill. Firstly, the guide rails have dropped a fair bit. Still a lot of turbo hints, but less direct arrows on the map. And I think that makes for a much more balanced mixture of content. I got stuck on this level for quite a while, in all honesty. A few more things I learned is that the house is absolutely huge and hard to navigate due to a million doors in this extremely well-off family's mansion. This house has a cold room and a freezer. What the fuck is the difference? Who needs two industrial meat rooms within their home? But the navigation issues are usually fun and force you to explore and pick up items ahead of time. However, those same navigation issues made a sneak mission extremely stressful as I didn't want to get caught and lose 20 minutes of hiding in closets and trying to open locked doors. The stress was good though, I had the right idea for the most part of the path and I only had to google one quick thing because I am a coward and didn't want to lose progress. 
Zero checkpoints for a stealth mission in a giant mansion does kind of stink. But I grabbed some rat poison and somehow it was enough to poison Agnes, the mean lead maid. By far the least brutal death, at least in the storyline so far. I've been genuinely shocked by the creativity of the kills in this 2012 little hidden gem. And I absolutely do feel super comfortable calling this a hidden gem at this current time. Now, does hidden gem mean one of the best games of all time and just underrated? Absolutely not. Just a solid game passed over too quickly due to it being approached with false pretenses. Now, just as things were getting a little too repetitive, the game introduces a new area, an undercover satanic ritual zone below the wine cellar behind a secret door. Poetically spooky and intriguing. Does the family have ties to Satan? Did they bring this wrath that I've been providing throughout the game upon themselves thus far? I'm really looking forward to see the story developed more. Unfortunately, I don't actually get to do anything or learn anything about that room just yet. Just a little teaser. Instead, I just grab some poisonous pills from within the room to slip them into some whiskey and force an overdose on the next victim. Quick note for chapter 9, Lawnmower Death. Fucking ouch, dude. Heading into chapter 10, we get around three cutscenes back to back, dumping tons of important information, and I'll just try to cut it up for you guys, and I'm sure you'll get the gist. So it turns out the grandfather knows something the rest of the family doesn't, and even knows that I'm Lucifer's son. He also knows about the satanic room in the basement and wants to meet me there. Finally, something is unraveling, so I make my way down an annoyingly complex sneak level, but the new power I recently gained to erase people's memories who spot me does make it more doable. Lucius has truly taken a turn for complexity and difficulty. At the beginning, I complained so much about the hand-holding and constant on rails, but it jumps off the deep end after and becomes downright tough. I found myself being about 90% on the right path for most things, but would end up googling the answers so I don't stay stuck on one level for 3 hours. 20 minutes stuck on a puzzle, and I call it. Call me a loser, but with so many games to play, I think this metric is reasonable for maximizing the experience to the most amount of games possible, while not also cheapening my experience on each game. By simply following a guide or not trying to solve the puzzles as the devs would have intended. There's still a lot of personal discovery and self-finding out and lots of aha moments that I enjoyed. All right, but back down in the satanic dungeon room, the grandfather tells us his son is just a disappointment to him and he's been really waiting for us to be born. But he's also grumpy at us since I've been killing so much and drawing so much attention. He wants me to kill this captured news reporter that he knocked out after he snuck into his own home. I use some super glue to fix a bowl to collect this news reporter's blood in some sort of satanic ritual. I then use some matches to light the ritualistic candles and continue to use items to set things up. Finally, we set up everything for this very high maintenance ritual and oh my god, I did not expect that to happen. There's an entry in your journal that mentions you for sure not being friends with the grandfather and implying a possible betrayal, and now that I think about it, the chapter is literally called Betrayal. Dude, I must have had 10 IQ. How did I not see this coming? I guess I thought it would be a couple chapters from now, let us learn more about the grandfather, why he seemingly made a deal with the devil, what for, business, political gain, all we really know is that it's part of the family business. Many unanswered questions as I watch the catalyst for many of these events bleed out. But then, the reporter who was strapped to the sacrificial tablet gets up and runs to fix the crosses to weaken my power, giving us the first real combat section of the game where you need to run around to flip the crosses back upside down, and then with your power restored, rev up some fireballs to blast him a couple times. Killing the reporter as well as completing that level. That was the end of the 11th chapter in Lucius. One chapter is equivalent to one kill and there are 18 total chapters in Lucius. Chapter 12, here we come. Finally, we get a cutscene with the dad showing us some signs of brainwave activity. I know the poor guy's been through hell, but come on. After his father's death, he finds some satanic looking books in his study and is now at least a peek a bit suspicious. As I start this next chapter, I want to mention that breaks do wonders for Lucius. Playing one to two chapters a day might be the ideal experience. Traversing the winding corridors of the main family's mansion can become wildly tedious, but a one to two day break from the game and I'm actually enjoying exploring that same house again. 
and I'm once again having that feeling of freedom within the world. No freedom to decide the method of the kills, unfortunately, as I must remind the listeners, is Lucius's greatest flaw, but playing it as intended as an on-the-rails point-and-click adventure game, I think it's a fucking blast. In chapter 12, I kill the homeschooling teacher because he dared to ask me to do math, and I fucking hate math. Skipping a few steps here, but I essentially mind control him into shooting himself in the head with a revolver. Chapter 13 is a bathtub hairdryer related death, and we move on to chapter 14. In chapter 14, the beginning cutscene shows us the detective and our human father realizing that they need to find the missing reporter and the grandfather to figure out what's going on. Their bodies are the key to the mystery. Let's see who we kill in this chapter to prevent that from happening. Okay, just kidding. Chapter 14 just has us mind controlling the family driver into huffing paint thinner until he's gonzo and then setting it up to look like he left the car running and died from carbon monoxide poisoning from the car's exhaust trapped in the garage. The whole thing gets blamed on the poor family mechanic Will, who gets handcuffed by the cop because for some reason, now the cop is suspicious for the first time that someone in the house may be involved. Interesting timing. And our powers are growing so strong at this point, we aren't even scared of the cop anymore. So while he's gone for 20 minutes to get the deputy to take in Will, I'm going to have to take care of him, if you know what I mean, before he gets back. Which promptly begins chapter 15, and we have to act quickly, killing him within around a minute or we get a game over. Which I, you know, tank a couple of times before realizing the simple answer. Always look at top shelves, ladies and gentlemen. There is a gas canister that I force open, pouring itself all over the poor handcuffed pole mechanic, and I have matches in my inventory, and you can see where I'm going with this. They do a brutal fucking zoom in on Will's face at the end of the chapter as well. Lucius does a really good job of making you feel bad for the actions you've committed. But there's only one way to see what happens in the story, so we've got to keep killing innocent people, I guess. In a video game. Okay, chapter 16 is starting off with a bang, with a cutscene that shows the dead totally convinced that his seven-year-old son, Lucius, is causing the deaths. He even calls us a thing. But thankfully, I'm a mama's boy, and mom is totally on my side to defend me, even saying that she is going to be waiting for him in the garden with me to leave, and if the dad doesn't show up, she's just peacing out with me. With three chapters left to play, 16, 17, and 18, I can only assume I'll be killing both of Lucia's parents pretty soon. Well, the fake human parents, but yeah. Maybe kill Satan in chapter 18 to gain full power and take over? That'd be quite a banger ending. I will say, where the fuck did the dad even start suspecting me come from? Like, I get that he found the grandfather's books and stuff, and obviously there was some Satan worship history going on, but why would he immediately know it's me and be so convinced? Unless I missed a cutscene, that realization seemed wildly rushed and threw off the story a ton for me. It's already a wildly simple and predictable story with some creative deaths and small twists, but how do you mess up the timing on that as well? Really unfortunate. And then reading the diary log for chapter 16 proves me 100% correct as it's time to kill mommy. Alone in the garden, singing songs about death, the poor woman has lost her mind. So I guess Lucius might as well put her out of her misery. This chapter does get pretty wild though. You essentially turn back on the power in the shed by putting a fuse in the fuse box near the garage, find some nearby nails and a nail gun, and the rest is history. Or at least I thought. But around midway through this process, you get a cutaway that your dad has found the ritual dungeon and the two bodies below the house. So now we've got to kill a bunch of people and fast. We get the nail gun powered up and running, but our dad is literally walking back to the garden with the cops behind him. So we place the nail gun on the ground, mind control the father, and the rest plays out. A brutal and sad death forced to be committed by the husband himself. Right in front of the detective and the cop, they go in for the arrest, but the dad throws a crazy based punch and is now on the run. Chapter 17 starts with us alone in the room with the cop. He's calling for backup, but reminder, he is alone in the room with us, the Antichrist. He has to die. In the silliest way possible, apparently. 
I make some statues floating around, which scares him, causing him to shoot all the crosses in the room on accident, which then gives me the power to bring a big statue into the ceiling fan, which he once again shoots incautiously. And now I can bring the short-circuiting ceiling fan down on his head, which I assumed was just going to crush and kill him. But holy shit, it turns into a helicopter, and this becomes a decapitation kill. This became my favorite death scene in the whole game. Just brilliant ridiculousness. Apparently, 17 kills was the special number because then we go sicko mode and torch the whole house. Chapter 18, the final chapter, opens up with something we haven't seen all game. A choice. There's two halves that I can pick here. One seems to represent a flame, maybe chaos. The other, a puzzle piece, something strategic. Two possible endings to the game, maybe? Let's start with the flame. This triggers a cutscene of me seemingly casting a fireball to add more fuel to the fire and burn the house even faster. You gain control of Lucius. I walk into the two pastors that rush to the house with crosses and immediately die. But if you do this correctly and just spam them with fireballs, run away to recharge, spam more fireballs, it sounds lame on paper, but it actually plays out as a pretty intense fight with the burning embers floating around. The atmosphere is remarkable. The chanting and the voice acting is actually solid as well. The pastors die in the fire and then your dad goes and grabs a fire extinguisher, which makes him fire immune, I guess. Fireballs no longer kill him. Whenever you throw one at him, he just puts himself out with, with the extinguisher. I don't know if that's how that works, but sure. So I crush him by manipulating a giant falling beam, and then it just fades to black. I mean, it's a decently cool and semi-satisfying ending with Lucius standing there at the doorway of the house that he's destroyed alongside with all of the family within it. The front door was also the only door we couldn't open throughout the playthrough, so it's kind of poetic that we are finally able to leave at the very end. Like we were almost the ones trapped and that this is us escaping. But I wish they showed more with Lucius and the detective here. Does he get arrested? Does Lucius kill him? What could possibly happen there at the end? Let's play the second ending and see if there's anything else. The second ending is nothing much at the beginning, just killing the pastors in a more creative way without the fireballs, and then the same with the dad kill until, wait a minute, this is actually very different. Holy shit, the cop helps us. At first I thought maybe it's because the cop was possessed by or controlled by our Satan father the whole time. That would make a lot of sense on why he kept missing all of the clues. But I think the general consensus online I could find is that it's because the detective finds the dad trying to kill Lucius and he still thinks that we're innocent. And the dad was the actual mass murderer who lost his mind. The puzzle ending is definitely the better ending in my opinion, giving us one of the coldest walkouts to a game. But goddamn, comparing them, that other ending was horrible. In my opinion, they shouldn't even have given the option for the flame one. And I bet that's what most people picked since it looked cooler. And that wraps up Lucius. A great game when judging it from the lens of its genre, but I'd argue point-and-click adventure games just aren't exactly a thriving genre. Lucius is $10. Is it worth it to buy and play after watching this video? Maybe for $2 on a sale if you're a frugal fuck like me, but Lucius is awesome. I give it a final rating of 8.37 out of 10. Thanks for watching once again, and make sure to like the video if you made it to this point, and subscribe to let me know if you want to see more videos like this one. Have a cool day, play some games, peace arena.